Okay, two deers. Here we go again. Another I'm not, uh, Restall's not here video celebration activity thing. Um, this time, I think you've got the three minute review question on a handout, so don't spend time copying it down. Um, but please spend some time, a few minutes, um, trying it on, uh, on your three minute review page, uh, and we'll take it up. Uh, please, supervising teacher, just pause the, the video for a few seconds. Uh, well, three minutes or so. Um, two deers, you may not uh, totally know how to do this one. It's a tough one. It's similar to the ones we did yesterday, but give it a go, and we'll take it up after you've had a couple minutes to try it on your own. Okay, here we go. Um, and I'm going to use the, the grass method to... Uh, to solve this one because it is a little bit different and we might be stumped about how to proceed. Um, remember grass, G stands for given. What are we given in this one? Well, we're given a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Mr. F's beef special is a hamburger noodle mix in the ratio one to two. Now notice that that's a fact that uh, it's not clear how we're going to use, but we'll keep that in the back of our mind as we keep reading. He has two old batches he'd like to use to make the 12 kilo, kilogram, uh, 12 kilograms required for today's grub. So that sounds like that these two things, that's today, right? That's today's stuff. And so um, we're going to make a mixture of two old batches into today's stuff. One mixture is 50-50 and the second is only 10% beef. So notice there's two facts. We've got batch one is 50-50, 50% hamburger and 50% noodle, and that sounds like one of those percent questions from yesterday. We don't know how much we have of each batch in total, but we'll assume that we'll have enough. Um, batch two is only 10% beef, um, and then that means, of course, 90% noodle. So uh, the idea is we're going to combine these two batches into today's new new stuff. We want what we're what we want is the new one to have one part hamburger and two parts noodles for a total of 12 kilograms and this is kind of the given now notice where our equations come from this we've still got a little bit of work to do don't we um, well what are we asked to find because usually that's a good idea of what to let our variables be how much of each old mixture should he use well that means our answer is he should use so many kilograms of batch one and so many kilograms of batch two so that's what we're going to let our variables be. Uh, our required is how much of batch one used and how much of batch two is used. Now, when we get into the analysis, this is where this, the tough part comes because where are we going to get our equations from? Well, we know that the 50% of the first batch and the 10% of the second batch has to add up to one part that represents the hamburger, right? We know that the today's batch, the new stuff, is in a ratio of 1 to 2. So one part hamburger plus one part, or sorry, two parts noodle has to be the 12 kilograms for today, right? And if I figure that out, well, and this is a little bit of, a little bit of work here, but maybe you could see it, that all three parts is 12 kilograms. That means one part is 4 kilograms, right? And this is this is, you know, even before we're going to write our equations. So here we want the amount of hamburger to be one part, well, four kilograms, right? So this is four kilograms here and eight kilograms of, of noodles. And that gives us our 12 kilograms in total. And notice that's still in the ratio of one to two. And whether you could, you know, you needed to use a grade 9 equation to get that or whether you figured that out in your head, that's up to you. But now we can write our two, two equations because we've got an equation here. 50% of batch 1 plus 10% of batch 2 is the 4 kilograms of hamburger we need. Okay? So I'm going to write from hamburger, I'm going to get this equation. 50% of X plus 10% of Y. And I don't need that extra decimal there. That kind of looks sloppy, so I'm going to fix that up. Is equal to the 4 kilograms of hamburger. Similarly, the 50% for the noodles, 50% of X plus 90% of Y 
is equal to the 12 or 8 kilograms of noodles that I want. And there's my two equations and two unknowns. Now notice these aren't in very good shape. We're going to have to sort of get these together. I'm going to maybe multiply each of these. And by the way, somewhere in here I've moved into my solution, haven't I? I've got my two equations and two unknowns. I'm going to multiply by 10 and I get 5x plus y equals 40. Oops. And multiply by 10 here, basically to get rid of the decimals. If, if you're not scared of the decimals, then of course you could do this you know, with just using the decimals, but I'd rather big numbers than decimals, so there we go. Um, how am I going to do this? Well, I might use elimination. Some people could see this Y and see, use substitution, but I like elimination. I'm going to go uh, and just write um, negative 1 times 1, which is going to give me negative 5X minus Y equals negative 40. And I'm going to write down equation 2. And the reason why I'm doing this is so I can eliminate the X's. And I add, and I see that I got 9y, or 8y rather, is equal to 40. And I should get then, y is 5 kilo, kilograms. And then sub back. And it doesn't matter into which one, but uh, maybe I'll use one because it's got smaller numbers. 5 times x plus 5 equals 40. Oops, equals 40. Oops, getting a little sloppy here. Subtract 5 from both sides, and I get x equals 7. So what does that say? Mr. F will need 7 kilograms of batch one and five kilograms of batch two. Okay, and how is that different than the ones we had yesterday, the percent questions? Essentially what was different was that the the makeup was in a ratio and maybe we had one from the from homework that was like that, uh, but that's it. And there's the statement. All right, on to today's stuff, the last new stuff. Um, and you've got the questions written down, so this is this should be uh, pretty quick. Uh, and again, supervising teacher, if you need to pause and let students reflect, then that's fine. Um, basically, the last ones are distance, velocity, and time questions. We're going to use this little formula here. Distance equals velocity times time. Basically, it's um, you know how long it takes somebody to drive somewhere or walk somewhere, that sort of thing. Um, Ferd's trailer, 15 kilometers from Dreff's house upriver. Against the current, it took him 1.2 hours. With the current, it took him 48 minutes. Uh, what is Ferd's paddling speed and what is the, the speed of the river's current? So the idea, there's Ferd's house, there's Dreff's house. They're 15 kilometers apart. And when he's going against the river, it takes him 1.2 hours. When he's going with the river, the river helps him out. It takes him 48 minutes. And notice I did a little calculation there. I'm going to change my color so we, we can see what I'm, I'm doing here. Uh, change my color. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 48 out of 60 is, is the fraction of an hour that I've got, 0.8 hours. So against the, against the current at 1.2 hours with the current, 0.8 hours. And what's required is we want to know, you know, how the speed, the velocity that Ferd can paddle at, and we want to find the velocity of the river. That's what it says. What is Ferd's paddling speed, and what is the speed of the river's current? So in the little distance velocity time, it's this one that we want to find here, right? And in fact, we want to find it twice. So how we do these distance velocity time is we set up a little chart. So in the analysis step, set up a little chart and the two sort of sets of information is we've got two trips, one against the current and one with the current. Notice that the distance from Ferd's house to, to uh, uh, his house is still 15 kilometers, whether it's against the current or with the current. Um, 
what we do know though is the time is different, right? This is 1.2 hours against the current and 0 0.8 hours with the current. And notice those had to match up in units of hours. But what about the velocity? Well, these are the things we want to find. When we're traveling against the current, Ferd's paddling velocity is interfered with the river, right? What he's actually traveling at against the river is he's paddling as hard as he can, but the river's working against him. The difference is the velocity he actually travels with. Notice that when he's going with, they're working together, Ferd's paddling and the river. So the velocity is furred paddling and the river working together. And, and from the tiny little distance velocity and time um, formula, I get two things. I get two equations. I got uh, distance equals velocity in brackets here uh, times time. And notice I could put the 1.2 over here, but, but we're not used to seeing it over here. And... Also, the second one, 15 equals 0 0.8 F minus R. And now, a couple of equations that need to go through spring training, get the, remove the brackets, that's equation one, equation two, and we can deal with this, okay? So, one becomes... And then it's the same old thing, right? Once we got our two equations and two unknowns, it gets to be pretty boring, right? Um, the, the funnest part is setting these things up. Um, so I'm not going to bother solving it. I'm going to stop there. Oh, hang on. I, do you see the mistake I made? With this second one, the width, is um, distance equals velocity time. Well, I missed a plus sign there. So this should be a plus sign. And then I get my two equations and two unknowns. And I can solve. Okay? So I'm actually going to stop. If you would like to use this as another one to practice um, a system of equations with decimals, you may. You should get, let me just find it in my notes here, that third um, travels at 15.625 kilometers per hour. And the river is a lot less than that, 3.125 kilometers per hour. And again, I'm not finishing it because I want you to have time to practice on yourself uh, without, um, you know, without wasting a whole bunch of your time. Um, notice... That was the analysis. The solution probably started right there, and then I'm skipping a whole bunch of steps, right? There's a whole bunch of steps skipped, and I'm missing my statement. Therefore, third paddles at 15 point, blah, 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 blah. You can, you can uh, handle that. I'm going to do the same thing with the last one. I'm just going to set it up, because really that's the challenging new part. You're getting really good. Once we get our two equations and two unknowns, once we get this step, we're good. So... Let's finish it off here. This last one, uh, poor old Ferd, his scooter breaks down 25 kilometers from, for home. He starts walking. So there's where the breakdown was. He starts walking, and then he realizes he's, he's, he's got to pee, and so he starts jogging home. Um, he gets home. Ferd lives in Pool, by the way. The greater metropolitan Pool uh, is where Ferd lives, I suppose. And he gets home in four hours. So... What are we given? The diagram, there's where the breakdown is. He walks for a little bit, then he starts jogging. We know that the entire distance is 25 kilometers. We also are given that he walks at 4 kilometers per hour. He jogs at 10 kilometers per hour. The total distance is 25, and the, the total time is 4 hours. All of this is given. So in all of this stuff must be our two equations and two unknowns. And how, how, do, we, how do we get going? Well, one way is... Write down the required. What's required? How many kilometers does he jog? Well, that should be our variable. 
the kilometers spent jogging should be one of the variables so we can figure out how to set this up. Notice that the kilometers spent jogging also implies that our second variable might be the kilometers that are spent walking. And then we can set up a chart. All right, this, this chart we see is using our little distance velocity time equation formula. And now I can, now I can set this up. Um, the distance spent walking. Well, that's, that's what we want to define, right? The distance spent jogging is J. We know the velocity, the velocity then of his walking was given, right? That was, that was uh, four kilometers an hour. The jogging was 10 kilometers an hour, right? And that was, was given. So what's with the time then? We don't know how long Ferd spent jogging, do we? But we can use our little formula to figure that out. See, we've got, for the time, is 4 kilometers per hour for however long it took. Notice, I don't want this extra variable, but I can solve for it. Divide each side by 4, and the amount of time spent walking is just the distance divided by the rate. And... Probably you can see that without even doing this, right? So if he jogged J kilometers and each kilometer, you know, he's moving at 10 kilometers an hour, what, how long is it going to take him? It's going to take him J kilometers divided by 10 kilometers per hour. That's how long it took him. Well, why do we need this at all? Well, we'll see for the total. The total distance, the amount walked and the amount jogged was 25 kilometers. Velocity... Well, we don't know what the total velocity is, nor do we really care. Um, but the total time, this is important, right? Because this was four hours. This is where we're going to get our equations from. There's one equation, and there's a second equation. Right? And so now I'm ready to start my... This was the analysis. Now I'm ready to start my solution. I've got a, a, an equation from the distance. Has to total 25 kilometers. And... The time, and look at there's one of those nasty equation one or fraction equations, right? We thought we'd never see them again, but there it is showing up. Um, so I'll again, I'm I'm not going to stop there. I'll do the one step where we where we uh, kill the fractions here. Number one, equation number one is ready for elimination or for substitution, but equation number two needs to go through spring training. So let's go. 2 becomes, and what are we going to multiply? Some people would say 40, and that would work, but 20 is the lowest common denominator, so I'm going to multiply each thing by 20. Oops, having pen troubles. It's just like I was there, right? Pen troubles. Okay, and so I'm not multiplying by 20. 20 divided by 4 is 5, so this is 5w and 2j equals 80. And that's my equation that's ready for elimination or for substitution. And again, I'm going to write the second one down. Well, the first one down, actually, it was the first. And I'm going to call that my system. Now it's ready for elimination or substitution and I'm going to stop there because this stuff once you're at this point we're good at it so I'll write down what the what the answer would be if we kept going um, and you're welcome to try and see if you could get the same answer but um, it's Ferd walks ten kilometers and jogs 15. Okay. The supervising teacher should have some homework for you to do, the last bit of the new chapter, and then the next part of the period will be um, review, and then tomorrow is review as well, 
and a test the next day as planned, folks. Um, so have fun. These ones are very, very challenging. And if you're stuck on time and you just want to set them up like we did in, in class because you got lots of old homework to take care of as well, I think I'd be okay with you just getting to this point and then stopping as well. Okay, so um, if, if you need to, it's good practice to finish them off. Okay, have fun with that, folks. Oh.